So this looks just like an ordinary field, which it is now, but 75 years ago, um, this is where the, um, the children who'd survived the Holocaust, 300 of them came to live, and here there were hostels, um, and there was a, a large um, dining hall and lots of other buildings, and, and they, they've all gone now, and over there, in fact, there's a school called the Lake School. Um, but this was a place where, where they came, and I, I like coming to the places, even though there's, there's very little trace of what, what there was back then. Um, I like coming to places to get a feel. And, and the, the bit I'm going to read from this is, is to do with hunger. When, when the children were in the concentration camps and, and, and they were enslaved by the Nazis, um, food was a massive deal. They would eat anything they could get their hands on. They would eat grass, they would eat potato peelings, anything. And often they would starve to death. And so when they actually came to the dining hall, which was here, it was a massive deal and food food became all-encompassing and this is a scene and this what i'm going to read now has been told by dozens of the boys and girls when they came over to this um, country this this first meal what it was like eating normally um for the first time and that's why i want as as um as the story this is one of the most important scenes in the book they sat at the hatch end of the next table and were joined quickly by seven others the tables were laid with white tablecloths and plates. Yossi was shocked to see a plate. He'd eaten out of a cracked bowl or his hands for the last five years. He'd forgotten plates existed. Then he spotted cutlery and quickly pocketed his own spoon. He wouldn't need that today. And then he waited, watching. As they waited, Yossi felt as if every one of his muscles had been pulled tight. His stomach ached, his brain was overheating. What if they got nothing? What if they missed this meal? When was the next one? If he got anything, what would he do with it? Eat a bit, hide the rest, take it all and eat it now so no one could steal it. Question after question ripped his thoughts to pieces. He hated feeling like this. Yossi's thoughts were interrupted by the movement of women in aprons around them. They passed baskets of something white down the tables along with glass jars containing something red. It's cake, Leo gasped. Can you believe they ate cake for breakfast? And jam, Mordecai added. It was hard to sit still and watch the other tables being served first. Yossi was craning his neck to see, would there be enough? Is it real, Mordecai asked breathless, the jam? Mordecai shrugged. Then a tall lady with curly hair stuffed into a net on her head put a large basket and two jars of jam in front of them. Morning boys, she said, I'm Marion. Some bread and jam for you. Thank you, Mordecai said, and translated bread and jam to Yossi and Leo. Thank you, the other two echoed. Bread, Leo asked when the woman was gone. He took the three largest pieces and put them on his, Yossi and Mordecai's plates. Then, as Yossi and Mordecai stuffed the bread in their vests, Leo slipped one of the jars of lap jam onto his lap. This is bread, he asked again. It's cake, Yossi said, taking three more pieces for himself and his friends. The food in front of them was white and soft. They were used to dark bread, solid bread made of rye. Even before the war, they had never seen white bread. She said bread, Mordecai shouted, frustrated. I know the word for bread, and she said bread. Put the jam back, Yossi said to Leo, aware that the seven other children on the table were already on their feet, their mouths open in protest. Leo smiled and returned the jam. Yossi didn't miss the fact that Mordecai closed his eyes and lowered his head over his food before he ate. And that, that, and that's like an ordinary scene where people are having something to eat but the significance of that scene is massive it's massive these are children who've for years and years of years have not had enough food and they're all obsessed with food constantly want, wanting to find a way of eating food and, and like selling or giving away anything to get their to get their their hands on food and now they're presented with food it, it's this huge deal for them and they don't They've never seen white bread before. They think it's cake, um, and all, all those scenarios. And that, and I wanted to write about that. And I wanted to, to read about it here and to come and read about it. those things happened here 75 years ago. And for me, as a writer, that that has a big effect on me. And I, that's why I think it's important when you are writing something to to go to the places where the things happened. And whenever I'm writing about history, that's what I do. As it is customary, when you sit down to the table in the dining room and you serve the meal, the first thing that holds your eyes is buttered bread. Hardly the plate was touching the table, 
that we grab the bread as quick as possible, those who were quick enough and hungry, and packed our pockets with it for later. The people in charge of us took us into the kitchen and showed us how many stacks of loaves of bread they've got. And more is arriving tomorrow. There's no need for that. We soon learn. And this is something I, I look back with great joy, actually. As a result of suffering, but nevertheless great joy.